Chris's uh, laptop machine. We should be up and going. Can you hear me in the back? Okay, great, thank you. So welcome, uh, my name is Vish Nadkarni. I'm part of the Intel Data Center Group and I am delighted to basically present the uh, sponsored track to talk about Intel and our OpenStack initiative. Before I proceed, I was asked to make sure everybody in the room is getting their passport stamp for attending this session. Um, there's a raffle draw happening, and I think you get uh, Intel Compute Sticks with Linux Ubuntu on there. So when you complete the session, uh, get a stamp in your passport, and if you don't know what that is, uh, talk to my friend Krish over here. And uh, you need, I think, three stamps for one raffle? Okay. And uh, for those of you who haven't checked out our booths downstairs in the marketplace, booth H3. So please stop by and check it out. Okay. Um, I wanted to kind of set the stage for about five minutes and then hand it off to my esteemed guests. I'll introduce them in a minute. Um, my, our job here today is to basically talk about Intel Cloud for All and the efforts that we've worked with our partners. I'm delighted to join today on stage by Nick Barsett is the uh, Director of Product Management at Red Hat, and I'll, oh, we'll have a formal introduction. And then Jim Sangster, who is a Senior Director of Solutions Alliance at Marantis. Both gentlemen will be discussing at length about their efforts in the Intel Cloud for All and uh, some of the uh, collaboration work we've done together. So, as you know, cloud architectures are enabling growth and innovation uh, but the broad adoption of the technology by enterprises and cloud service providers is still lacking. Um, you know, cloud computing has become a tremendous driver of growth, but yet we see that uh, enterprises in particular are kind of struggling to, you know, adopt the cloud technology. In fact, you know, we see that the industry is not moving fast enough. Um, we have a situation where traditional enterprises who basically want the same agility and efficiency as the large public cloud service providers are not able to get it. So what we've done as an Intel is we've announced an initiative called the Intel Cloud for All initiative and we've made a series of announcements this year starting in June when we basically announced uh, the on-ramp program partners with Cisco and Dell and then later in the year, in July, we announced partnerships with Marantis. And all through the way, all through the year, we've announced strategic partnerships with uh, various companies to basically uh, unleash these clouds for enterprise, for both enterprises and tier two CSPs. So the basic pillars behind the Intel Cloud for All is really around three basic items. It's invest, optimize, and align. Basically, what we're doing is, as I mentioned, we're investing in creating enterprise-ready, easy-to-deploy SDI solutions. SDI, for those of you who have not yet heard, is the Intel software-defined infrastructure. It's the foundation for how we expect to deliver enterprise, uh, enterprises the goodness of cloud uh, the cloud model and being able to deliver services through their data centers. We, as I mentioned, we have taken partnerships with our uh, lead vendors and leadership partners to deliver solutions to the marketplace. We're also optimizing for high efficiency across cloud. Uh, basically, we are trying to work with our partners and Nick and Jim will talk about it. Um, bring features that enterprise customers care about. Think about high availability, scalability, re resilience, reliability, upgrades. There's a bunch of features that enterprise customers care about, and that's part of the optimization of the code. And lastly, we are also aligning our efforts to accelerate cloud deployments. Um, Intel is one of the leading contributors in the OpenStack Foundation. We are part of multiple groups and we provide our, uh, our contributions and leadership through those forums. 
So my first speaker today is Nick Barsett, Director of Product Management, and I'm delighted to welcome him on the stage. Intel and Red Hat have had a long history in creating um, OpenStack partnership, especially going back in the Linux days where Linux, where you guys have been the leaders in open source system. So I want to invite Nick to talk a little bit about what Intel and Red Hat have done in the um, uh, OpenStack system enterprise. Thanks a lot, Vish. So I guess I need to switch uh, to the other deck, correct? So, funnily enough, uh, yeah, this partnership between Intel and Red Hat is uh, not something that started uh, yesterday. Uh, a little bit more than 10 years ago, I was working for Intel, and I was actually working on a program with Red Hat, <laughs> um, one of many. Um, and as soon as we get the slides, we'll have the detail of them, or maybe not. Um, but so that we gain a little bit of time, I'll talk about them. So, uh, if you remember, Red Hat was founded in 1993. Um, in, uh, ever since, there has been uh, a very close uh, joint interest in first making people move to Linux, uh, then in making people adopt virtualization, and more lately, for people to adopt cloud. Um, as Vish mentioned, uh, we've been working on the uh, Intel uh, uh, on-ramp uh, program, uh, which uh, first demonstrated the OAT and TXT function to, for added security in cloud deployments. And uh, we've been uh, operating a, a test flight platform for the past year uh, or so, demonstrating that two years, thanks two years. Um, Demonstrating that, um, more recently, we announced the version of this same program, the on-ramp, for the enterprise to make it easier and uh, more uh, efficient for enterprises to uh, use and deploy uh, and maintain OpenStack. And uh, you're going to see uh, later in this presentation that a little bit more has been and is being announced today. So here, here was a slide I was waiting for, but now I've said everything I wanted about this slide. <laughs> so for the past 20 years, we've been working together in making these technologies be safe and secure for the enterprise to consume. And as we've been doing it for uh, Linux, we are doing it again for the open hybrid cloud. So three key things in our enterprise dedicated program. First, make it really easy to deploy. Second, provide a way for the legacy workloads to have a home and OpenStack. Even though OpenStack is not very friendly for stateful application, we found a way to provide high availability for instances or guests. Uh, in the case some compute node was to fail. How do we do that? Simply by combining the technologies that are available in uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and uh, the one available uh, in OpenStack. So Nova plus Pacemaker Remote allow us to automatically evacuate and restart VMs in, ca in case of a node failure. And something that is still not completed, but on, on which we are still working today, uh, rolling upgrades. Because when you have a very large uh, cloud, and we really hope that our customers are going to have larger and larger clouds, you don't want to upgrade everything at once. This causes too much of a disruption. But when you do such an upgrade, you cannot, um, at this point, have different versions of different components running at the same time, right? Of the same components running at the same time. So we've been working with Intel on implementing versions objects 
that are going to allow us, when completed, to provide this version mismatch uh, to versions running at the same time in the cloud. We've also been uh, working on making the ecosystem a little bit more vibrant, on uh, making sure that we are uh, working with partners to deliver the value uh, that we are creating together upstream. And we, of course, have a, a great uh, go-to-market plan. But this doesn't uh, stop at OpenStack. There are multiple communities in which we are jointly investing upstream and downstream in order to deliver the value of the open hybrid cloud. For example, um, Intel has uh, been one of the first sponsors of the DPEK program uh, um, that is, I guess, now a foundation, I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, um, of which uh, Red Hat is uh, one of the members. Uh, same thing for Open Daylight, same thing for Open Vswitch, same thing for KVM, but that's uh, uh, a, a much older history here. All this is combined efforts to ensure that we are delivering in an open source way the, all the components that are necessary to deliver real uh, value. And this, uh, when you look at the components with, that we are talking here, can apply both to the enterprise or to uh, telecom operations. We are also ensuring that we are delivering these things that we are creating upstream to the real customers by including it in real solutions. The first one of these solution, part of the on-ramp uh, for the enterprise program, is the solution that uh, we are building with Cisco. One of the things that can be of, uh, a challenge when you deploy OpenStack for the first time is the configuration of the hardware. How am I going to configure the hardware so that my OpenStack deployments uh, happen correctly? By having reference architectures defined with uh, a hardware vendors such as uh, Cisco, we are able to cut down on this complexity. By adding the value that is specific to uh, Cisco, by adding the value that we've jointly developed uh, with Intel, we are delivering a turnkey solution to customer that integrates with N1KV uh, or ACI that is deployed in a matter of a day. Uh, that is integrating the UCSM uh, functionalities and much, much more. With Dell, same problem, same type of solution, but here adding the specific of the uh, Dell components. Um, we've been working uh, with Dell on a program that we call Jetstream. Uh, for the past uh, two and a half years, if I'm correct. Uh, we are now at version 4.01, uh, just about to release 4.1. Um, Dell has been building reference architecture with us and was uh, one of the first uh, partners to join the uh, on-ramp for the enterprise program when they saw that we had sold this HA uh, problem that I was talking about. And in fact, if you were there at the last summit, Dell was the first partner to be de demonstrating this uh, VM high availability functionality on their booth uh, in Vancouver. We've been co-engineering uh, this solution together. We've been building our support capability and we've also uh, been uh, uh, building uh, the deployment experience by cross-training our team. We now have uh, an, a very strong validated architecture that uh, is also available uh, in uh, a matter of a day when somebody requests it. As I mentioned before, the on-ramp uh, uh, program 
started with this uh, test flight program uh, two years ago. Uh, in the past two, uh, two years, more than uh, 1,000 attendees joined the 40 plus workshops that we organized. We had hundreds of test flights happen on the hosted solution that we are operating, demonstrating, among other things, uh, TXT. We have more than 50 deals, meaning customers that have decided to deploy after doing the, the test uh, with some of the largest companies in the world. And we've signed up with uh, a very large number of uh, value-added resellers throughout the US. So this is really concrete results of these actions that we are uh, doing together. But today I'm very proud to announce, and that's today's big news, Lenovo is joining the on-RAM program. So start from today, Lenovo, Red Hat, and Intel are going to be collaborating at building a reference architecture for OpenStack. We are uh, extending the, an existing relationship to provide the Lenovo-specific reference architecture for easy deployment, secure, reliable OpenStack. This is going to be first on two types of servers at uh, Lenovo, the uh, 3650 and the 36, uh, uh, 3550. Um, and this is, of course, going to be using all the tooling that uh, we've been working on upstream, known as triple O, um, for the deployment. It's going to be uh, implementing the management that is specific to the Lenovo system, and is going to be delivered worldwide pretty soon. Another announcement that was made today that is also quite exciting for me is the um, a program that is called the Intel Network Builder, Builders Fast Track that uh, Imad Susu announced in his keynote this morning. So, as you certainly know, we've been working very hard on making NFV, network function virtualization, happen uh, at uh, various telcos. And one of the key elements there is providing functionalities that are exposed in hardware up the stack all the way into VM and even pretty soon to containers. And that takes the form of a partnership uh, around DPDK, as I mentioned earlier, but also in the integration of this into Open vSwitch so that you can still benefit from the functionality of Open vSwitch, not just do a pass-through when you need uh, fast uh, packet transfer. And this program is not going to stop there. This program is to go even beyond and allow for the most demanding use cases that we are seeing in an, the NFV space to be delivered to our joint customers. So as you can see, we've been quite busy uh, working with, with uh, Intel and I I'd like to thank um, everyone at Intel that is present in this room for their support in our great adventure. And on this, uh, I guess you may want to switch. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Don't go far, Nick, because we'll do questions afterwards. Did you want to do that one slide as a transition, or should I just jump in? Great. Okay. As we're going between the, the slide sets here, a little bit of background into what we see as the overall spectrum here around ease of use, deployment, and solutions in and around this space. If we think about this, the way the market adopts OpenStack has been changing over time, and the more this moves mainstream, 
over the course of the end of 2015, 2016, and beyond, the more important it becomes to make this easier to use, easier to deploy, and more packaged for customers to deploy. If we think about this on the left, the far left of this spectrum is where the bleeding edge, the early adopters love to be. Many of you here that have long been community members and love to be on the bleeding edge. Do it yourself. Go straight off upstream. Community support or support it yourself. And that is fundamentally important to taking OpenStack and moving it forward. And we never want to change that. As we move more into the middle, we've seen a number of different companies Red Hat, Mirantis, and others offering distributions that package all the goodness and harden what OpenStack is about, offer that up to our customers, and in turn, provide support. In the case of Mirantis, we also provide fuel to make it easier to install. I'll get into that in a few slides. But that is a way to take a technology, and particularly one that's moving as aggressively as OpenStack does, and make that much, much easier to consume as a customer, and then, most importantly, in an enterprise environment, support it over the long haul over time. And then on the far right, we have appliances, delivered turnkey, completely packaged hardware, software support all together, and, and certified by these partners that I'll talk about, which becomes fundamentally important. And if we think about that, it's very important to have choices across this entire spectrum. So as we see customers moving increasingly toward the early adopters and more and more mainstream, we expect to see more business grow on the right, but that doesn't mean we see the left ever go away. We're still going to be seeing those aggressive people on the bleeding edge that want to just keep pushing OpenStack forward, and that's terrific. But it's a trade-off. If you think about this, there's an inverse proportion. On the left, you're doing most of the work, but you also have to have quite a large engineering organization to pull that off. On the right, you're consuming lots of that from one or multiple vendors that are bringing together a solution, and you don't necessarily have to have that large team of support. And that's part of why, as we think about that over time, customers in the mainstream don't necessarily have a dedicated OpenStack engineering organization. So if we think about OpenStack, where it is today, and how we can simplify that experience, the deployment, the ease of use, at the infrastructure level, when it comes to Mirantis OpenStack, or what we call MOS, that's why we've developed Fuel. And Fuel is, a, is part of our distribution. It's an open source technology in and of itself. It is the number one dedicated, purpose-built OpenStack installer. Now, there are other tools out there that, that people definitely use, Ansible and, and so forth, things like that. But when we look at a purpose-built tool just for this, it has a GUI, it has a command line interface, you can use either. But this is how we can configure, how we can deploy, and how we can manage an OpenStack environment very, very easily. And so that's why we invest very heavily in this environment. So you can go straight out of the box with what we call fuel plugins into different infrastructure technology, storage devices from uh, storage companies, different server or software-defined networking technologies, and so forth, are all then automated through the use of these plugins through fuel. And then once you get OpenStack up and running, uh, there you go, and you have the, the normal interfaces and so forth. So that's what's taking care of all the infrastructure below OpenStack. The layer above that, and really the whole point of once you have infrastructure as a service running, what are you doing that for? You're doing that to run applications. At the next level, ease of use at the application level, that's what Murano is all about. And Murano is a, a part of OpenStack at this point. And it's something that was uh, brought to the community from Mirantis. It's also part of our distribution. And as of the announcement back in Vancouver, there is the OpenStack community app catalog that then provides access to all these different technologies 
by going straight to that app community and being able to automatically deploy database management systems or container engines or dev test tools like Git, Garrett, Jenkins, and so forth. There is a, a large set of different Murano applications that you can choose from. You can also create your own, and these are uh, multi-composite applications. So through what you can do in Murano, you can not only use applications that are available to you from the community, you can also create your own applications and have them available for your end users in that application catalog. So that's how that can be at the higher level, at a PaaS layer or an application layer, ease of use to be able to provide that to your end users. And you can give them as much or as little capability to be able to utilize that technology. So these are the two ways that we use this technology to provide either infrastructure or application level simplicity. But now let's take that together and extend that into how we take that to a complete turnkey solution. So if we talk about turnkey OpenStack ease of use, that's bringing it to a rack level. And I mentioned that we talk about it from a hardware standpoint of the servers, the storage, the networking, any of the software-defined networking, software-defined storage, all together with the OpenStack technology. And what we do at Mirantis for that is a program that we call Unlocked Appliances. We announced it, we had, we're doing a technology preview in Vancouver, we announced it in July, we had our first solution at that point. So we have a portfolio of unlocked choice and are building this out over time. This is more than reference architectures. Mirantis does have a number of reference architectures and yes, these are built on the foundation of reference architectures, but they take it steps further. Those steps further include full automation software build in the factory through certified partners, and then those partners, once they deliver it on site to a customer, it's integrated into the customer's data center and network, power into the wall, and then it's certified on site for the customer to reduce their risk in deployment. That certification is a fully automated test harness. So when we're done with that certification process, we know we have a fully operational, up and running OpenStack cluster to the spec that was designed in the factory, not only performing, but performing at scale that it was intended to perform at. So that's the idea behind the program as we've been building that out. So I'd like to give a little bit of a, a future reference, a technology preview of an upcoming appliance that will also give a, an example of what one of these looks like. So very, very typical, we've got top of rack networking, we've got both uh, compute foundation and storage nodes all integrated into a single rack. From this technology, in this particular example, we're using Arista switches for the, the top of rack on both management as well as uh, data plane. For the compute and foundation, we're using the Super Micro Super Server 2028 TP. And on the storage side, we're using the Super, uh, super Storage Server 6028R. In this case, it's an NVMe-based storage subsystem optimized towards Ceph. Ceph is being used for the software-defined storage in this case. And by using Intel's based SSDs, connected directly through NVMe. We're getting the highest performance possible in terms of an interconnect between the storage subsystem and the rest of its node there when we're talking about uh, the high performance we can pull out of um, the write journals in the Ceph environment. So we're always trying to take advantage of some of the unique and advanced features from Intel as we're bringing these out. This is one example of that where Supermicro is on the forefront of NVMe offerings that can then be brought into your data centers. From the next standpoint, I want to also come back to some of the things that Vish started with when it comes to Intel and Cloud for All and that overall initiative. And it was mentioned that uh, Mirantis became a part of that a few months ago. So I thought I'd share some of the things we're working on 
First, let me give it in the context of a lot of what's behind cloud, uh, cloud for All is really making OpenStack the most suitable cloud platform for the enterprise. And that may be a big statement, but that's really what we're collectively trying to do together. And I gave some examples here of what Marantis has been doing in our previous and most uh, recent release, 6.x and 7.0 of Marantis OpenStack, and the enterprise features we've been doing. And this is previous to the Cloud for All initiative. But from Marantis OpenStack, we support 200 nodes out of the box. We can go to many thousands of nodes outside of, of just a out of the box engagement. But inside, just opening up the box, what you can download and use, 200 nodes supported out of the box. We've integrated so we can have KVM side by side with VMware as well as NSXV into a, a hybrid environment that is very common for enterprise customers. We're today supporting vSphere with a fuel plug-in. Very soon we will have an NSXV vSphere, uh, NSXV fuel plug-in as well. As I mentioned earlier, that makes it very, very easy for you to deploy as you're rolling that out in your environment. We've also recently adduced, uh, introduced a hierarchical uh, multi-tenancy environment through Keystone. So it's not only just multi-tenancy, but multi-tenancy within the multi-tenancy. So you can go cascading all the way down to support a very large organization and also enhanced our in-place upgrades to be able to go from one version to the next to the next more elegantly, as well as implementing rollbacks. However, we're very busy at work with Intel in how do we take this technology and really push the enterprise agenda moving forward, not just selfishly amongst ourselves, but in the community. This is all work going on in upstream together led by Intel and Marantis. And these joint enterprise features you see on the bottom are really what's defining that in future releases. So enhancing more role-based access controls, but the other bottom two are a little bit more near and dear to my heart and wanted to talk to them about them a little bit more. Many people feel that VMware is just this untouchable thing in the enterprise and OpenStack's just never gonna get there. We don't believe that to be the case. We're taking strides to try and reach performance and feature parity between what you get when deploying OpenStack with what customers enjoy with VMware. So specifically, live migration performance and reliability. So what customers have been expecting and enjoying with VMware uh, when you use vMotion and DRS and all those types of capabilities, these are the types of enhancements that together we're putting in upstream and working very hard on to make that so in an OpenStack environment, it behaves the same, if not better by the time we're done. Also in an HA environment, so better handling of failure nodes and improvements of uh, projecting when and how we can move things around to accommodate those failures. Uh, very similar to say a VMware HA feature parity is what we're trying to achieve there. So some, some examples, we have a full roadmap that we're working on together and uh, again, worked collectively together in the whole community in an effort to make this very, very suitable for enterprise class customers and an overall end delivery of enterprise grade open stack for everybody. And I think that's suitable to the name for cloud for all. At that point, Vish, why don't you come on up and, and close it down? and then we can do some questions at the end here. Thanks, Jim, and... So can you believe it? We are actually almost on time, even with our technical difficulties. So I'd like to request Nick to come up on stage, and we'll do a few questions from the audience, and let these gentlemen answer them. So, questions? Well, you guys are convinced, wow. That is amazing. Okay. Going once. Going once. 
So, okay, before you guys go to a happy hour, a quick plug for those of you who joined late, uh, please participate in the Intel Passport program. Um, you need to get a stamp for attending this session. My friend Krish is gonna hand out some of these passports. Uh, there is a cool raffle for you to enter. I think raffles are being drawn every multiple times in a day, and uh, there are like 12 cool prizes, uh, Intel Compute Sticks with Linux Ubuntu. So do stop by our cube. It's, cube eight, it's booth H3 in the marketplace. And I want to thank you for your time and for attending this session. Thank you so much to you and to our speakers.